What's up everybody? Today uh, I have a video that's um, about, basically I'm going to be covering uh, the evolution of the United States military one court canteen. Um, I'm, I'm currently, I currently have lots of time right now actually. Uh, uh, I'm on a coronavirus break, I guess you could say, from school. It's, it's going to pretty much drag out for the rest of the school year. Uh, it's a statewide thing, so I'm going to be home a lot. So I decided I might as well use my time wisely and put out a video. So today, uh, like I said, it's just going to be covering the evolution um, of these canteens. Uh, I'm only going to be covering the largely issued main canteens. Oh, and before I, I, I say anything about that, uh, I'm not going to be doing any World War I canteens, um, simply because there was so much that happened, so many changes that occurred during that time, and I simply don't have the uh, examples to show you. Um, and I, I'd really like to make this as solid as I can without, you know, have as much information as I can about it so it can actually be used. So I'm going to be jumping in right from 1918. Now you that that is World War 1 era, but that was the very tail end of it. Um most most 1918 dated stuff probably didn't even make it to the field. Um simply because it was, you know, right at the end of the war. So um I'm only going to be besides World War 1, I'm only going to be covering the main issued canteens, one quart canteen, cups and covers. Um, so I'm not doing any World War II plastic or enamel canteens. Um, those were uh, experimental for the most part. I mean, the plastic was more experimental than the uh, enamel. Uh, they were both basically just to find um, good alternatives to uh, aluminum. Uh, so, they, they didn't, they were only really made for like one year, so I'm not going to have any of those. Uh, no mounted canteens, no, uh, arctic canteens. Um, I'm only doing the standard issue stuff. And no two-quart canteens. Um, those were, I only have one, one, one two-quart canteen. Uh, but there were, uh, quite a few different changes that happened to those throughout their use, I guess you could say, throughout their time period that they were used. Um, so yeah, these are the examples that we're going to have to work with. Uh, it's a good amount, and I should be able to say what I want to say with what I have here. Um, so yeah, uh, a big thanks to my brother. Uh, not all these canteens are mine. Uh, some of these are his. So uh, this video was not would not be possible without him so generously lending me some canteens. So yeah, um, we're first gonna start with we're gonna jump into it now. So we're going to uh, start with the canteens themselves. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and here you can see I have some canteens laid out that are my examples. So, we're going to jump over here to this one, um, and we're going to go back to 1918. <laughs> uh, in 1918, this is what would have been used by American military members. Um, before this... Uh, the canteen looked pretty much like this, except in 1918, they, they started marking their canteens with U.S. Um, and the manufacturer and the year that it was manufactured. As you can see, this is a 1918 dated canteen. So, yeah. Now, this canteen would have been used uh, like, like this model, I guess you could say. This is the M1910 canteen. Um, if you're wondering, uh, but this would have been used all the way um, up until 1942 
when they uh, came out with this. Uh, this is pretty much the exact same, except they had a new type of cap. I um, mean, it was a black Bakelite cap, and it was three quarters of an inch tall, and it was flat topped. Now, this one is not flat topped. This is a later model, but the uh, in 1942, these would have had just a flat top. And it would have been three quarters of an inch tall, which is, I'll get to that. Um, this is aluminum. These are both of aluminum construction. Uh, so now, later on in 1942, uh, they realized that they needed aluminum elsewhere for the war effort. So what they did is they started making canteens in stainless steel. This is a stainless steel canteen. Uh, the, uh, one of the main differences that you can see here is where the seam is located. On these aluminum canteens, the seam is on the side and it runs all the way up to the top. Um, but on these stainless steel canteens, it goes right along the center horizontally. So that's one big thing. Um, yeah. So in... 1943, 1943 is, uh, when they, uh, they saw, it's, uh, they, the, the big change came with the cap. Um, in 1943, they changed the cap to have this recessed top in it, so the flat top canteen caps were no more. Um, this recessed top pretty much protected the whole cap chain system thing here from being damaged. Because as you can see, it's, for the most part, pretty flush with the top of the canteen cap. Um, another thing they did when they made this change was they, uh, they uh, made it bigger by a quarter of an inch. So it was now one inch, which is what this is. This is the one inch tall cap with the recessed top. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that one. Um, in 1943, uh, they started producing the aluminum canteens again alongside the stainless steel canteens. So in 1943, they were making, to the war's end actually, they were making both stainless steel and aluminum canteens at the same time and issuing them at the same time. So these were, these saw battle right alongside each other. Um, in 1945, production stopped. For all canteens, most stuff production stopped for in 1945 when the war ended. Excuse me. In 1951, uh, with the uh, start of the Korean War, they started making this style canteen again, the aluminum ones. Um, however, they were very slightly larger in size and capacity. Um, I don't have one of these larger canteens, but it was the exact same thing as this, just bigger. It held more water. Um, they stopped, um, they shut down uh, production with that for those canteens in 1954. But in 1962, they restarted production for those aluminum canteens that were a little bit bigger. And then they stopped again in 1963. Um, those were the last metal canteens that were ever made uh, for the United States military. However, they were issued until about 1972. Now we're going to move down here. Um, and in 1961, they came up with a new canteen. Um, and it was this. This is the M1961 canteen. Um, it's a plastic construction. Um, it's all plastic, actually. There's nothing that's not plastic on here. Um, as you can see, the cap is bigger here. Here's for comparison. As you can see, the cap's bigger. It's bulkier. Um, and another big change is with the cap chain. Um, the cap chain is no longer a chain, it's a plastic strap. So that pretty much, like, cleared up. 
get that um gave up some metal pretty much um the cup the cup however remained metal like with the whole set uh, the uh, system the cup remained of metal construction to allow heating liquids and food and stuff um this this is pretty much a groundbreaking design there were many reports from uh, American troops in Vietnam that were praising this canteen and how great it was. It was lightweight. Um, it was just really good. It was really good uh, design. Um, in 1966, we're going to go over here. Um, in 1966, um, with the introduction of the M19, or not M19, uh, sorry, excuse me, the M17A1 gas mask, um, which had a drinking tube. Um, they, uh, introduced a new cap, um, and it was, basically what you do is, you open this up, and the, uh, drinking tube should mate with this, and then all you have to do is flip it upside down, and basically use the tube like a straw, like the tube runs inside the gas mask, and you just use it like a straw, um, so it, the water will, you know, go from the canteen into your mouth. Um, it was a it was a pretty interesting uh, design, and it was really helpful. However, this uh, cap didn't see much use until the late seventies and eighties. Um, they they didn't really use gas masks a whole lot in Vietnam, to be honest with you. There was never really a threat of gas being used. Um, However, there, there are some pictures floating around of them wearing gas masks in the field. Um, so they were used, just not a whole lot. Um, now this, this design, what, we, what you see here with the uh, NBC cap is what you call it. Um, NBC stands for Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical. Um, this is called the NBC cap. Uh, this this model right here would have been used throughout the 70s and 80s and throughout the 90s and even the 2000s you see them. However, later on they switched to a green cap. So in night in not, not, sorry we're out of the 20th century now. Now we're into the 21st century. Um, I don't have an example for this, but in 2003 um, they uh, came up with a new design and it was uh, the one court. Uh, it was the M1961 canteen that you see here in all of drab, except it was collapsible. So basically, you'd squeeze it, like squeeze the pressure out of it, the, or the extra air, as you drink water out of it. So there would be no sloshing noise or anything. It was pretty neat, actually. Um, but they produced and fielded these, fielded these alongside these normal canteens. Um, however, that came to an end in 2008 when they ceased production. Um, now, this, this model right here of the uh, M1961 canteen, it still remains in use today. However, it's very limited due to the, uh, the use of camelbacks that um, guys use nowadays. If you don't know what that is, it's basically like a big water bladder that you can wear on your back and there's a tube that runs up that you can drink out of it through the tube. Um, those started seeing lots of use in Iraq earlier on in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Um, so yeah, and as, as they became more popular, these became less popular. But they, they are still issued. These are standard issue nowadays. Um, but the Camelback is a much more popular um, version it's a more popular yeah so that's all I have for the canteens next we're going to talk about cups okay now we're back with the uh, canteen cups uh, so again we're going to start in 1918 uh, in 1918 the cup design was very similar to this however the, uh, the difference was in the edge as you can see, this is a, uh, it's a different, this is folded, 
uh, and in 1918, the uh, edges were rolled. Uh, if you've seen them before, the edge is like, it's round, like it's actually like a big circle, kind of, instead of this being relatively flat, it would, it would be actually like round, a big, like, you know, like if you would roll a piece of paper or something up, it would look like that the whole way around. Um, in 1942, uh, they started producing cups in stainless steel to conserve on aluminum, uh, like much like the canteens um, however they uh, also changed the edge they changed it to this folded edge design uh, so this is a post 42 model as you can see it's 45 dated um, I'm not sure I think this is I'm pretty sure this is stainless steel um, but later on in 1942 aluminum cups resumed production um, there's not much changes, many changes to go over with these cups because it was a really good all-around design. Um, troops loved this design. It was so simple yet very practical. Um, it was just great. Um, so this design would have been used all throughout the 50s and the 60s and part of the 70s. Now over here, um, this started in 1974. These uh, cups were redesigned for the LC1 gear, um, or Alice, whatever you want to call it. Um, they made them out of stainless steel with a flared edge. Now, as you can see, this there's no folding or anything going on with the edge of this cup. It's just flared, which means it's like it, it kind of like goes outwards. But it's all, it, there's no extra material to it. It's just, yeah, as you can see here. Now, compared to this, to the uh, 42 model, where it's folded, this is flared. This started in 1974. And they also changed the uh, handle design to this. They called it the butterfly handle design. You fold out like that. And you can hold it like a mug. This had a uh, L handle design. What you do is, I can do it with one hand. Uh, you unfold the handle. And you fold it up like that, and this whole thing is supposed to go. It's supposed to hook into these. It's a little hard to do with one hand. It requires two hands. Um, but that's the L-handle design. If you hear people talk about that, that's called the L-handle design. And this is the butterfly handle design. Um, this design was used throughout the 70s mostly, and in the 80s, and throughout the 90s, and even up till today. They still issue these today. Um, however, much like the canteens, they're in, used in limited use. Um, uh, with the uh, introduction of MREs, these sort of lost their use a little bit because guys can make their drink right in the bag and drink it right from the bag. Um, however, these still do have their place, like for coffee and stuff. You don't want to drink coffee out of a bag. That might, that, that would get a little hot on your hands, but... So this still does have a, a place. So this is still issued today. So yeah, like I said, not many changes to go over with this because it was just a great all-around design. Okay, um, now I'm back for the last time here. Um, we're going to talk about covers now. Uh, this is, there's lots of information in this one. So we're going to go over here and we're actually going to start with 1942. In 1942, this is what would have been standard issue. Um, the seam, the one of the big changes was the uh, seam, where the seam was. As you can see here, the seam is on the side of the canteen, whereas before 1942, the seam would have been all along the back. This is actually a, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a 42, they did example. Yeah, it's really hard to see that. 
you can see the two. But yeah, this is actually a 1942 dated example. Um, in 1943, they started making stuff in all of drive number seven. This is all of drive number three, and this is all of drive number seven. Uh, however, in 1943, they were making uh, transitional gear where they had some pieces of both different colors. So you see cartridge belts and canteen covers and uh, all sorts of different stuff sometimes that have like, I don't know how to quite explain, but like say one piece would have, one piece would be OD7 and like the rest of it would be OD3. Um, I'm, I'm sure you have seen them out before. They're up there. Um, so these were the two that were pretty much used throughout World War II for the most part. Um, now we're going to jump over here to the M1956 ones. These were a big step up. Uh, they were they, they were both in they were in OD7. Sorry. <laughs> I'm tripping over my words a little bit. Uh, so yeah, these were an OD7, um, and they featured these new sliding keepers. They're a little hard to do with one hand. Uh, but yeah, they do that, and then your belt will go through here. It's a really good design. Uh, people call them Alice Clips. That's what they're more commonly known as. But they actually... Uh, originated with the M56 gear, so they're actually they actually should be called M56 sliding keepers. Um, another thing that they did uh, was they featured uh, these snaps instead of the traditional lift the dot um, fasteners. Um, so yeah, uh, in 1961, however, they changed the lining right here to a synthetic fur lining before they were this uh, wool felt lining but they changed it to this it was probably cheaper to manufacture and it probably did a better job at insulating um, in 1966 they changed from the traditional cotton trim here uh, you know right here this stuff to nylon. So that started in 66 is when they went over to that stuff. Uh, now we're gonna jump down here. This was this is what you would see during Vietnam. Both of these were used around that time. You would see both of these being used in Vietnam. Now we're gonna jump over here to M67. Uh, M67 was the pretty much the same exact design as the M56. However, this was uh, made of nylon, completely made of nylon. Um, they had a small pocket on the front here that was closed, the Velcro closure. This would be used to store water purification tablets. They would, it would come in a little tiny glass jar thingamajig. Uh, <laughs> using real technical terms there, I guess. Um, but that would be stored in here. Um, uh, they would... Uh, well, another thing they changed is the stitching on the front. As you can see, there's four lines of stitching. Whereas on M56, there was seven lines of stitching. And they were both vertical. Um, this uh, Another one thing that they it's different was uh, this was in OG 106 which has olive green number 106 that basically took the uh, place of the olive drab number whatever like you know for example olive drab number three olive drab number seven this is olive green number 106 uh, for this next one I don't have a, uh, a uh, what's it called a uh, an example. Um, however, it's basically these two mashed together. 
Um, I'm going to talk about M72. That was basically the uh, kind of like trial stuff for um, for Alice and stuff. Um, but it was what they did. It was it was the same exact thing as either of these, except it featured both lines, both directions of stitching. So it would have four vertical rows of stitching and two horizontal rows of stitching. Um, and another thing they added onto that was the uh, small drainage eyelet on the bottom. Now we're going to talk about LC1, which is this. Um, that was the M72, like I said, however, minus the four rows of vertical stitching. If you had four vertical rows of stitching on this, then that would be M72. But without, this is LC1. Or Alice, or whatever. Um, now, later on, like in the 90s, they changed the color to these of these to a more sage green color. You've probably seen them around. They made that. Uh, they made pretty much the whole system out of that that color. Um, mag pouches, canteen covers, uh, bandage pouches. They were all made in that sage green color. Sometime in the 90s is when they made that switch. But this would have been used all throughout the 80s and most of the 90s. And with some use, you see it. You see some of it being used in uh, early 2000s as well. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the Molly system. This was introduced in 1997. Uh, the whole design completely changed, as you can see here, the, the major differences. Um, they, uh, one of the main changes being how it is attached to your ear. Um, as you can see, the LC1 stuff, or LC2, it's the same thing for the most part. Uh, it was... It featured the uh, the Alice keepers, <laughs> but with the Molly system, they featured these these large straps that were used that used these snaps, and you would slide it through. Like say on the vest, like a vest that you would be wearing, it would have this on it, and as you can see, you can stick stuff through there. If you've seen that stuff before. But if this were the vest, then this part would go through, and then it would snap, and then you would have this on the front, so you could store stuff in it. This pouch was actually a canteen carrier and a general purpose pouch at the same time. Um, you could, there's a flap here that goes over, and then this strap goes through there, and then you can use it as a general purpose cover. But when it's tucked in, then you can, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be for use with a canteen. Um, the, uh, the closure technique, or just the way it was closed, changed. Um, you have these, this big strap system, and then a quick release, or a fast X buckle, it's, yeah. And then they added another pocket. They made the pocket bigger, but they added another one, so there's one on each side. And they also have this drawstring type deal going on here. So yeah, these were available in three different colors throughout their time. Uh, they were first available in M81 Woodland Camouflage. And then they were later on introduced in Three color desert camouflage, uh, and then coyote brown. Those were used with the Marines, and then as you see here, UCP or universal camouflage pattern. These are still issued today in 2020. Um, they're probably, I'm not quite exactly sure what color they issue them in now. I'm sure it's probably they probably use OCP, you know, the new multi cam type stuff. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all I have for you today. Um, hopefully, this hopefully you learned a little something. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.